You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Jay, I find myself often being optimistic. That's generally how I slant. I'm an optimistic type of person. I have hope in my heart and in my life. I just want to, I believe that the best is going to happen, that good things are going to happen. But at times, I have to find myself taking a step back to just make sure I've seen all the angles and I've looked at all the angles from every direction to make sure I'm not missing something. So as I go and and I'm writing stories for Sooners Wire and I'm looking at Oklahoma's defense, which I think is going to be really, really good this year, I found that I think they still have something to prove as a defense, and that's in their pass coverage. This was a team that, again, they improved from 99th in scoring defense to 49th by six and a half points per game from 2022 to 2023, a huge jump. Uh, They improved their run defense in which they were one of the top 40 programs or top 50 programs in the nation in run defense last year. Again, a significant improvement from 2022 where they still have room to improve is in pass defense where they ranked 112th in the nation, giving up 250 passing yards per game. And really the biggest issues were against Texas, Oklahoma State, TCU, and Arizona is where really the big issues came to fruition, where Oklahoma gave up over 330 yards to each of those teams. So, Jay, I ask you, is that a concern for you at all as Oklahoma heads into the 2024 season? Not at all. See, the one thing that I appreciate about our defense is that, yeah, we did have a tendency of giving up yards, but that's also a function of the way that your offense runs, right? We had, you know, with the way Jeff Levy ran his high up-tempo offense, he had a tendency of having three and outs in under a minute or or a minute and a half, right? So if you have a possession that short and is that ineffective, yeah, the other team's going to get a lot of opportunities to take shots. And we also took a lot of really big leads in these games to the point that only thing defenses could do is pass the ball because – how else were they going to go ahead and try to come back in these games? But the good thing about the way this defense played is, sure, between 20 and 20, we gave up a lot of yards. We weren't giving up many touchdowns. We had a touchdown to interception ratio of 18 to 20. Gave up 18 touchdowns, 20 interceptions on the passing side of the game. It's actually pretty darn good, right? I mean, that's something you would take, right, John? That's something that we would be – Typically excited about if we didn't look at the numbers of the defense, right? Looking at the way we were scoring points. We were putting up numbers last season. We gave up 30 points to three teams last season. That is not something we saw the season before or the few seasons before that with the old regime. We were giving up over 30 points on a regular basis. We gave it up only three times all season long, actually twice in the season, one in the bowl game when everything fell apart for us. But my point is, John, when you look at this and you really look at the landscape of it, do you rather give up yards or points? Which one would you prefer? Well, obviously you want to give up fewer points. You're going to give up yards. And and I, I actually went the same avenue that you went and I wanted to look at it. And the TCU game is about the only game where I felt like the game script got away from TCU and they had to just start slinging it around because they got behind so much in that game, but Mm -hmm. Texas and Oklahoma state and the Arizona games, those games were pretty neutral game scripts for much of those games, especially Mm -hmm. the Texas and Oklahoma state games. Those are one possession games down to the final few minutes. Uh, The Arizona one, yeah, the Kansas game, but they actually held Kansas under, uh, you know, 300 yards passing because it was a rainy day uh, yeah. in Lawrence that day. But the Arizona game is the only one that really got away from them in the fourth quarter. And Arizona actually was able to pull back and not have to throw a bunch in the fourth quarter uh, to run away from the Sooners. So I, I, I like the direction that Oklahoma is heading. I understand that they play a little bit more zone coverage where they're playing, you know, not to get beat deep. They're, they're, you know, playing some bend don't break defense and it's and it worked out to their advantage most of the time at the same time they didn't play i think the the depth of quarterbacks that they're going to face this year no yes quinn ewers is good i think josh hoover at tcu is going to be a good player uh noah fafita obviously is one of the 
you know, top 10 quarterbacks in the country. I, I don't I think that that's a stretch, uh, you know, and then Alan Bowman. Okay. I, I've taken enough shots at Alan Bowman over the years. I'm not going to sit here and say he's a top 15, top 20 quarterback, but maybe he is, maybe he's a top 20 quarterback, but he's an experienced quarterback, a dude yeah. capable of making plays in the passing game. And I, I also do look back to that game um, that he had Texas tech going you know, head to head with the Sooners, oh, man, what year was that? Was that 2019, 2020, 2019 yeah, or 2020, 2019. In 2019 where they're just going neck and neck and, and it's looking pretty dire for the Sooners until Alan Bowman gets hurt and is knocked out of the game. And then Oklahoma is able to run away with it. So those quarterbacks were able to kind of light Oklahoma up a little bit. And now they're going to have to face Jackson Dart, Nico Yama Leava, Brady Cook, Quinn Ewers, uh, Jalen Milrow under Kalen DeBoer's tutelage. Uh, you're going to have to face, you yeah, know, an, an LSU offense. Let's say an LSU offense LSU that's offense. really good. You know, Nuss, Nussmeyer had a good, a good bowl game, but prior to that bowl game, he hadn't really done a whole lot. So the passing games that Oklahoma will face this year are definitely going to challenge them. And I feel great about the safety group. I've said that a number of times over the course of the, the last eight months on this show. I feel great about the safety group. The cornerback position still needs to get better. The pass rush needs to get better. If those two areas get better, the pass defense will improve significantly this year. Yeah, and I think that that's where we're going to get to, right? I think the passing, the pass rush is going to be dramatic different in comparison to what we've seen before. We've got more experienced guys, and we're we're beefing up the other guys. And I don't anticipate us seeing seeing a bunch of max protect until mid game when teams can't stop our rush. Right. That's what where the problem lied for us. Most of last season, of course, yeah, I know y'all heard this. I say this numerous times, but that's the one thing that's critical is that dealing with a pass rush that pushes you around and you realize that, you know what, we need to go ahead and just protect constantly and then just start eating up that secondary. That was where we struggled. Now, the good thing is, is one of the biggest struggles we had in the secondary was zone. Like we were, we were okay in, in a Brent Venable zone scheme. Des Malone is really good at that. That's his bread and butter. That's how good he was at San Diego State for the two years that he started. That's going to dramatically change. So with him and Gentry Williams running your zone and whoever else they decide to put as a smorgasbord within that nickel, in a linebacker room that's got the experience to recognize that, oh, it's like the light bulb is clicking in a lot of their heads, kind of like it did for Danny Stutzman when he played Iowa State in Iowa State. That was when that moment hit. It was like, they're baiting me. Wait, they're going to bait me. Let me pick this pass off. Pick it off, take it to the house. You start learning those lessons, and it feels like a lot of them are starting to catch some of that. And I'm thinking in practice, they're probably showing them the same thing, saying, hey, this is what you need to look for that way you're not, you know, easily tricked going down the line. Yeah, it's it's a team that's gaining experience. They're gaining talent as well. So I'm, in, I'm encouraged by all that. I just think it's something I'm going to be watching for over the course of this season to see if they can take that step. We've seen scoring defense take a big step. We've seen the, we saw the third down defense take a big step. The short yardage defense take a big step. The rush defense take a big step. Now – now is the time for the pass defense to improve to the extent that it helps Oklahoma win these games. Again, they were good in some, in some games, they were good in some games. I'm not going to sit here and say they're, they're terrible. They were garbage. They were right. not what that 20, what 2018, 2019 defense was in pass coverage. No, oh they weren't gosh. that bad. They were not that bad. They were good. Still again, a lot of <laughs> interceptions, a lot of plays being made in the, in the secondary. So still a good, you know, pass coverage, but I want to, in order for them to be elite, you can't rank 112th in pass defense. No, I agree. You can't, so, but you let can't me ask grade you out in the quick. 60s by pro football focus. You just can't. No, I agree. With, I agree with you with that. But let me ask you this. Who's the pass rusher that you think needs to really step up for, for, for the entire line to be successful? R. Mason Thomas. You've got to get somebody that can get to the quarterback in the blink of an eye. Okay, and the, the only guy out. that they've Great got point. on the defensive line right now is either R. Mason Thomas and Adepoja Adewari, guys that can just jump off the line of scrimmage and bend around a tackle and get to the quarterback in less than two seconds. I need those guys to step out and break out in a big way this year. Now, you've got defensive tackle talent that can help you in that 
and, and pushing the quarterback back, not allowing him to step up into the pocket, that's going to help your edge guys be able to get to him a little bit easier when they do bend around the offensive tackles. They're not having to chase him back up the pocket mm-hmm. that he's going to be standing there because Dejon Terry, Dominic Williams, David Stone, Jaden Jackson, Grayson Hall are going to be pushing that pocket back. So they'll have a better opportunity to kind of meet the quarterback in the backfield. But I need to, I need a healthy season of R. Mason Thomas. If he's healthy all year long, you're getting six and a half sacks out of that dude, and you're getting a ton of pressures easily from him. He's he has the juice, the flexibility, the agility, and the quickness off the line of scrimmage to be a an impact player that SEC fans are gonna be like, wait, where how come nobody was talking about this guy? Like, where'd this guy come from? Yeah, I can so, see that with R. Mason and PJ. That, that, that's the two that I would say the same. That once they go ahead and any all clicks for them, and they get they, they're healthy and, and it clicks. Yeah, they're gonna be the, they're gonna be the, the game changers for us. Yeah. Hey, we're in the SEC now. Everybody, right now, you have the chance to make every moment more over at FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But the, as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. I was checking out the SEC title winner odds over at FanDuel right now. And obviously, it's Georgia at the top, Texas just behind them. And then a little bit for the back you got alabama Ole miss lsu kind of in that next tier oklahoma is kind of in that third fourth tier of teams just behind mizzou and way ahead of auburn in the fan duel conference winner odds uh, at plus 2700 so you know a little bit of a long shot but not quite the longest shot as auburn just behind oklahoma since they're plus 7500 so very interesting uh, lines over there so you want to get in on the action go to fanduel.com and again Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Go check it out. Subscribe to Locked On Sooners wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. So hit the notification button over there to let you know when new episodes drop. And now you can also join the Locked On Sooners Insider Program by texting SEC2024 to 405-817-6711. You'll get 25% off your first month. And you can have direct one-on-one conversations with Jay and myself. You can ask us questions that we will do in a special q and a for you the members of the locked on sooners insider program but we'll also use your thoughts your comments to create content here on the show as well so go check it out by texting sec 2024 to 405-817-6711 follow jay at unfair sports myself at john nine williams the show again at locked on sooners on all the socials but until next time he's jay smith i'm john williams boomer sooner